Um, hello, we are from Lex Group 55, Lex Group 049. So I brought news for you, so this is our group, and I'm going to start with introducing myself. My name is Mary Martin, 190104. Uh, my name is Shirin Chen, 187793. My name is Tarin King George, metric number 
or they will actually puncture through your gastrointestinal tract. Mm -hmm. What usually like the owners of the dog give once to the to their dog because like what's the purpose? Is it just to for dogs to play or I think well, I think it's more for misconception that dogs yes. like to eat bones. Bones. Yeah. Oh. That's why they eat the remnants of bones. <laughs> <laughs> whereby the people tend to keep bones in their animals mm -hmm. and they think uh, rather than throwing it into the dustbin, wasting the bones, they just keep it for the animals. Oh. Yeah, it's just like how people misconcept that um, the cat's actually enemy uh, is a an enemy to a dog, but then nowadays <laughs> they can become <laughs> their best friend. <laughs> for the um, pet owners to know where they actually um, some of them do not know that if they feed Panadol to their animals when they they feel that their pet is having fever they feed the Panadol to the animal is actually will cause toxicity to the um, um, animals especially in cats um, because um, dosage as low as 50 to 100 mg per kg will actually cause toxicity in cats and um, will eventually result in death. Um, there are uh, actually mechanism why why um, they are prone to toxicity. It's basically because um, cats they are lack of a certain enzyme to actually um, metabolize the acetaminophen, uh, active ingredient of Panadol, uh, and then to excrete out in the urine. Yeah. Same as dogs too, but um, dogs may require higher dosage to cause toxicity. Mm -hmm. But it is also not uh, advisable to give uh, Panadol to both cats and dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, in animals, they have different um, type of medicine that they use for um, for animals that ha has a fever. Mm -hmm. But sometimes this situation is hardly to like be educate to the village people, like mm -hmm. kampong kampong because normally they don't really care whether the drug got got be excreted or not. Normally they care is about once I given the drug, then other day or following day recover. He don't re he know the village person only know okay I give the drug recover okay that's all. He don't really care like. Even the drug is still accumulated in the body or excreted out from the body. Uh, so that's why we need to do this more this kind of education to the people. I think it's important for us to share kind of information. So anyone has a last topic? Maybe more like an educational campaign around their area. Okay. Maybe it's not only focus on village people, but people in the city sometimes they tend to want to save uh, money to visit vets because you know um, vet consultation is not um, cheap that's why they thought that this type of remedies can actually help their pets but um, without knowing that it's going to cause toxicity to their um, pets well, Some of them I hear is they think they, they act themselves as a doctor so they do a human medicine okay, they say cannot put to the animal because higher dose right so they pop up they cut into four parts so they give only one quarter to the animal uh, uh, but actually they know what the dosage but, but actually they don't know the dose is the same uh, the dose is still the same never, never like you cut already it's still the same dose so talking about the what campaign is now I just remember that you guys know right recently we have a very hot issues about vaccinations which is people a group of people that doesn't believe or not sure about the protection protections from the vaccines. So you uh, like uh, as we know like yeah 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 yeah, yeah for it's anti vac <laughs> anti vaccine okay so like we believe that vaccination actually can um, help us to prevent uh, like if we give vaccine to our pet it can help prevent like illness transmissions of disease from pet to pet from pet to animal from pet to humans right and like some people believe
say that like if we vaccine our animals like we can reduce the cost because um, treatment cost is much much more expensive than prevention than vaccine so you guys have any thoughts about vaccinations is there any anti-bacteria no <laughs> Actually, protect uh, uh, an individual from um, getting infected. Mm -hmm. So, normally, the vaccination can only be done for an animal that is not infected yet. Yeah. But if you give vaccination for the animal that is already infected, for example, in the cases of um, FIP, like infectious peritonitis, when you give the vaccines, it actually um, severe more. about um, government Kuching, Kuching Sarawak, they launched a project which is mobile from house to house to spread the news awareness and um, about vaccinations and they give free vaccines to the dogs so like it's like wow like mobile to make something so so unique oh, that's very nice so rabies outbreak now is like one of the most hot issues problems going on in Malaysia. So other than that, uh, if we take it as a whole uh, in the whole world, for example, um, there's one more problem with this whole population of the stray dogs and cats. Yes. So these animals, um, in order for us to reduce their population, perhaps we can do um, like spaying and nurturing, spaying for the female and nurturing for the male cats and dogs. So uh, there are a lot of importance uh, advantages of spaying and nurturing. Uh, like spaying, it can actually help prevent uterine infections or any tumor like lesions for, for the female cats and dogs. And for nurturing, actually it's good for the male cats and dogs because as it can prevent testicular cancer or any, or any prostate problems. So if you happen to go for vets, it's quite cheap right now for spaying and nutrient, which is 70 ringgit for females. Yes. Female, so, spaying or spaying, female and nutrient. Spaying or in other names, ovarian hysterectomy is where we move we move <laughs> uh, all the uterus, the ovary and the ovita in order for the animal to not get pregnant anymore. Because the more they have, if they still have this reproductive system, then they will produce this hormone like estrogen, so they will become more susceptible to mating with uh, other males that is also hormone stimulated to become more aggressive in mating and then leading to the overpopulation. So that is my explanation on how to prevent overpopulation of the cats and dogs in Malaysia by promoting spaying and nurturing. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have any other information? So actually I read the news on um, spaying. So they actually have this World Spay Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, it's just, when is it? I'm not sure but it's, <laughs> this news is on February 16th. Yeah. It's from Ontario.
don't think we have um, reached that standard yeah, yet. Yeah, and yeah. Will we will give free service. Because but um, but um, last year, uh, there's one um, NGO. They actually offer like um, uh, um, discounts, discount, uh, or or you actually can do it in any private clinic. But then you need to keep that receipt and actually uh, claim claim from them. Like for um, for castration, you can actually uh, get back um, eighty ringgit, and for spaying it's higher. Yeah. But if they, the the private clinic actually charge you more than that, then you have to support yourself. But I think it's a good start for um, Malaysia encouraging uh, encouraging people to actually monitor your pets. So okay. for your information. <laughs> For information, if you don't know what is meant by castration, it's the same as um, glycerine for the male. Which, which okay. is, uh, yeah. yeah, castration is glycerine for male. Yeah, but neutering is uh, broad. broad. It can be either spay uh, for spay. female spay. or male. Yes. Okay, I think um, neonatal care is uh, one of the important things that the pet owners should know out there. So, uh, once they have a neonatal pet animal, they are the kitten or puppy. The first thing first they have to do is that immediately after castration, after actuation, is that clear their habits. Uh, and also they have to check for the breeding. If there is no breeding, they have to support the animal uh, for the breeding. And also they have to check the circulation. And next, they have to dry the puppy because if the puppy is uh, in a hypothermic conditions whereby lack a uh, drop in the body temperature, then it can cause death to the pet. And also they have to disinfect the umbilical cord because it will be the root of the infection, infectious disease. And next they have to examine uh, the uh, pet overall. Uh, they have to check for the skin condition, uh, is there any abnormalities and also is there any congenital disorders there. And also finally they have to weigh the animal and also uh, they have to check for the behavior of the animal if the body score is okay. They actually have a cat and then suddenly they got pregnant and then yeah. they, have, they just give birth over there yeah. in their house and people just don't know how to take care about it. So I think it's important for us to share this kind of news also. So and we have four kids. We have four, right? Yeah, we already got more than four. Yeah. 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 So we have John Atto Care, which is now from Thailand, and also what should we from Lingchen okay. and Next is about the um, Cindy about the toxicity of the drugs and then the same for the vaccination. So we have four. Yeah, I think I want to talk about <laughs> Yeah, I want to talk about the sure, never mind. Regarding the uh, allergy, because a uh, few days ago I think I saw a video. A dog actually get a uh, vaccination from a uh, uh, private vet clinic and uh, the dog actually developed this kind of joint problem and people start to have the uh, wrong perception that uh, like those anti-vaccine group uh, they start to have perception that uh, I should not actually vaccinate my pets because they might get this kind of disease or something but actually the fact that uh, the, the truth is that the, the chances of getting this kind of um, disease is there so you cannot prevent it so instead of like uh, you know not sending a Pets to vaccination and uh, breaking the um, immune barrier, you know, this could actually like reduce the the immunity, uh. So you get like bigger chances of spreading disease, and which could affect other dogs as well. So I think this needs to be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. And you want to see actually, it's because people don't know the how, the how yeah how the vaccine works. It's actually to prevent the diseases and most of yeah most of them is already non-existent the diseases so that's why people don't see the importance of the vaccine actually so there there will be something like a recurrence of diseases that usually yeah should be extinct yeah there will be recurrence of them so I don't think anti vaccine this anti vaccine Since, since we already discussed so many, so should we come, come out with a question?
Wicked World against Bengal or India. That'd be a good show. It's quite hard to decide because yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. I think the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.